Uh, so here's a paragraph you can refer to for general bond accounting. And as I keep emphasizing, the bonds payable cap always holds the face value. Bonds payable. Okay. It always holds the face value. Uh, we have the discount if the bond is issued below face value, the premium if it's issued above face value, and the difference goes into discount on bonds payable or premium on bonds payable. Um, now, what happens when bonds aren't issued at par value is that the interest payment and interest expense accrue at different rates. To adjust for that, GAAP requires that you use the effective interest method. Well, that's the preferred method. Um, it will be used in, in most cases. So to apply this method, the easiest way to do it is you take the bonds carrying value at the beginning of the period times the effective rate interest rate divided by the number of payments per year. Now the effective interest rate was the market, it's just the market interest rate at issuance. Now in, in the bond market, interest rates change constantly. So by applying this method, this is not, we're not looking at market information. So we'll call this it's a cost method, but in particular, it's amortized cost. So the carrying value, the CV of the bond, is going to be at amortized cost. All right, and once again, this is for liabilities. Uh, the effective interest method is also applied to investments in bonds. However, sometimes the fair value is applied on with, with bond is issued as liabilities. This will always be the treatment. So well, let's look at this first example under the effective interest method with the debenture bond. In fact, we're going to use the 10% uh, coupon rate bond that we did the present value on before. Payments July and January 1. But in this case, we're going to take the 8% market rate. Okay. Here's a 10% coupon rate. We know it's going to be a $5,000 payment. So let's look at the, the payment first. So 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000. If this had been a loan, then we know we'd be having 5,000 of interest expense every six months. But because it's not a loan, it's a bond, and was issued at a mark, in a market, and the market price was different than the face value, we have to account for that difference. So it, it's, we're going to do the journal entries, but let's look at the schedule first. So we received 105, 242. We're going to pay this interest and then pay this 100,000 principal back. But in fact, we're receiving a little bit more than the face value. So what we're going to do is this 5,242 is going to be amortized to interest expense to reduce interest expense a little bit each period. And how do we do that? Well, this is, here's the beginning of period carrying value. So we take it times 5%. I should reverse that. So times 5%. So 5% 5 times 105,242 equals 4210. I'm off a little bit here. Let me come back to this. Let me just do it over here. Take this times 5% and we'll move it to there, 4210. All right. Now we're paying 5,000. So 5,000 minus 4210 equals 790. This is amortization of premium. It's not an actual account that will be in a journal entry. Amortization means it's a reduction in an intangible asset or financial instrument account. So it's just a systematic reduction of a premium or discount account in this case. 
All right. So we have a rule we're applying. We reduce the premium balance. 5242 minus 790 equals 4452. So we take this plus 100,000 equals 10452 and then times 5% equals 4718. And you keep doing that in your schedule. So the big things to remember are remember. Take your effective rate and divide it by number of payments per year. It's probably the most common mistake is you would have taken, oh, like I did. I took the wrong rate. The other common mistake is to take the wrong rates. So when I make mistakes, you learn more. So if we took... We'd take in 105,242 times 5%, 5 you would have gone zero. That's over 5,000 bucks what's happening. So, ba 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 ba. All right. So it's 4%, and this is 4%. Okay, so that's our effective rate. And maybe that's a little clue to me and you that we what we should do in our schedules is make sure we calculate our rate. All right, now I will want to point out in terms of the end, sometimes uh, there's a little bit of rounding error. So what you'll do is take the 962 here and then 5,000 minus 962 will equal the 40, 4,038 to plug that because on your last day it should be the case that you have no premium left and uh, the carrying value equals a face value. Let's take a quick look at these journal entries. The schedule lines up all the journal entries. So the first row, here's your issuance. You have bonds payable holding the face value. Uh, don't forget me. Here's your premium of 52.42. Here's your proceeds of 105.242. 7.1, interest expense, 42.10. Amortization of premium, 7.90. But we don't call it amortization premium. It's just a reduction to the premium account. You recognize 52.42 on day one. Now you're reducing it by 7.90. And here's your cash payment on July 1. Let's look at an adjusting entry. 41.78 up here. There's your interest expense. 71.82 up here. And your schedule. 8.22. Amortization of premium. Now it's not a cash payment, it's an interest payable. And then on January 1, you make the payment, reduce your payable, credit your cash. <clears throat> and I just skip ahead, there's a right here to skip ahead. At the end, interest payable, bond payable, and your final cash payment of 105. All right, so this if you can get the schedule, then everything will just plug in the journal entries. I will like to mention that um, if you had done straight line, that would be 52, 42 divided by 6 equals, it says 873.67. Let me double check that. Yes, and I'll just put 874. Okay, and that means your interest expense... 5,000 minus 874 would have been 4126. Four thousand one hundred twenty-six interest expense under straight line. Okay, just want you to be a little bit aware of the straight line. Uh, obviously, the schedule isn't very interesting if it's straight line. Um, this interest expense would be the same, the same, the same, the same. 
amortization will be the same, the same, the same, the same. But it's just another way to spread out this 5242. So the other thing you should notice is that in the premium case, interest expense is always uh, less than, less than, less than, less than, less than interest payment. We got paid more than the fixed value. We're going to take part of that to reduce interest expense every period. Okay, so uh, next we're going to get into, it looks like, bond issue costs. 